Hey, Howard here at 82 Maple. And look at this. Wow, it looks like Christmas, but it's actually mid-March. And, uh, but here's what brings up the subject of Christmas. Follow along with me. Look at this. Got a little package here from our friends at Norwood. It's uh, the long-awaited uh, electronic replacements. Uh, you watched the episode where I was complaining about uh, how the electronics on this unit went out after two and a half years. I rigged a little switch in there, uh, managed to rig up the throttle so it would still work. But uh, of course, I had to push the uh, saw head back and forth. And uh, if it seems a little crowded in here, uh, it is because I haven't built my equipment sheds yet. And that's one of the reasons I need this little sawmill to be up and running. I did do some cutting uh, manually, pushing the saw head back and forth. It worked wonderfully, but I really miss the uh, full uh, uh, feel and touch of... Uh, full hydraulics and electronics. So today is the day and it's not only about uh, installing the uh, new electronics panel, but it's about a major cleanup. You remember this mess. I've been promising for months to clean that up. Uh, we've got some wiring up here for the lights that, uh, well, I'll throw in some photos and tell you why that doesn't exactly work. But uh, uh, the reason it doesn't work is simply that that wiring shifts around and uh, a little bit of a design flaw on the part of Norwood. They, uh, the exhaust coming off the engine, uh, the exhaust pipe rubs right up against the upper crossbar. And if the wiring happens to work its way over there, which it does with time and vibration, it starts to cook. And uh, in fact, uh, the exhaust outlet uh, significantly burned or distorted the coatings on part of the wiring for my lights. And so we're going to work at rectifying all of that, cleaning things up as best we can. And uh, this is really a bit of a before and after. So uh, let's see what came out of the box. Follow me here into the uh, little sawmill shed. And uh, this is what we've got. The new panel, you'll notice it's a bit different. Uh, the old panel had all of the output outlet plugs on the top. Not a great design. I really like this. They're on the bottom. And I know you're probably curious like I am. And so I had to crack the box open and just see what was in there. It looks like we actually ended up with a swappable circuit board if necessary. Very proprietary to our friends at Norwood. I got it, understand completely, purpose built. But uh, instead of buying a box in future, if there's a failure, hopefully I can just get a circuit board, hoping even more that uh, this never happens again. We've got some wiring here just to connect everything. And that's it, pretty straightforward and simple, except a massive improvement. I've got a wireless control now. I've just got it sitting here on the charger, prepping it for later today. And uh, they actually sent along two extra rechargeable battery packs. I keep spare parts over in here and it's in that, uh, the battery packs are in that little bin. I've got my tools out. Hey, look at that. That is a snap-on 95th anniversary ratcheting screwdriver, a gift from my brother. And uh, what else have we got going on here? Uh, yep, I had to pick up some bits and pieces because uh, not that Norwood short shipped anything in this order. Everything has all the connectors in place, which is wonderful. But uh, for re-rigging those lights, my battery charger, my battery connections, I've got everything prepped and ready to go here. And uh, 
hey, let's make this happen. Stay tuned. I'll throw in a little footage of when we get this fired up and uh, are doing some cuts. Some really exciting stuff happening here. Uh, these cuts over here are in preparation for a little composting outhouse that I'm building for down near Coral's office. There's uh, water down there, but no uh, sewer plumbing. So that's a whole nother project. It'll be a whole nother video, but we've got these uh, pieces stickered and drying uh, as much as they can dry in near freezing temperatures. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. We'll give an update as we get closer to the end of the day. Okay, mid-project update. So I started pulling apart all my wiring here, and then suddenly the thought occurred to me, what if this new panel was faulty? What if the new controller was faulty? I would have taken all of this apart when I actually had a working sawmill, uh, albeit I just had to push the carriage down the rails. I've got to be sawing tomorrow. We've got uh, some implement sheds to build over there. I've got a bunch of stuff sitting out in the weather. I'm not a big fan of that. I think equipment does far better when one keeps it under cover. And so as I started pulling all of this apart, it was just, am I going to go past a point of no return here? and then need to spend hours putting it together again if my new little panel doesn't work. So just before I start dismantling all of this, let's just connect the new panel. Uh, we've got a cable here that runs up to the batteries. I connected that. I connected the cable from this port down here that runs up to my vertical lift. And then I connected the cable over to my saw head drive motor. So, hey, hang in here with me. We're, this is non-rehearsed. Oh yeah, I have my throttle actuator here. So, everything's connected the way it should be. These are very cleverly um designed so that one cannot get the battery cable into a controller uh, spot despite the seeming similarities in the diameter so really well done from a design you know from uh, uh, previous videos that i'm a big fan of practical solid foolproof design and it seems like norwood has scored big here uh, okay, again, this is the throttle actuator. I just threw a little black tape around so these things don't touch during the test phase. Okay, are you ready for smoke? Are you ready for fire? We're turning this on. Okay. Hey, you heard the noise. And what's happening? My controller is showing that we have power. Let's try the throttle actuator first. And that's... Uh, probably going to cause the least damage if something's not right. Wow. Let me just get a better angle on this here. It's working. I'm going to turn it off now or turn it to the low speed setting. Hey, it works. Okay, next we're gonna go in order of progression, vertical. Let's see, there's my vertical drive motor. What's happening? Okay, so I was pushing down. Um, okay, so going like this makes it go up. So obviously there's a polarity reverse here somewhere, despite the fact I've hooked the red to the red and the black to the black. That is not an issue, I guarantee. We just switch that. And uh, because I want to be going like this to make it go up, not down. And now I'm going to reverse and pull this down. But it's going up, as you can see. So I'll just reverse the polarity on those. That's fair enough. Now, 
hey, here was the missing feature, the carriage drive. So I'm going to rotate my carriage speed here. And what happens? Hang in here with me. Oh, we have no activity. Hey, you know why we have no activity? We do have activity, but I had not reattached my chain here to the drive. I have to bring the chain in. It goes under this sprocket, over this sprocket, around and down and under this sprocket. I think I heard that drive motor running. Let's just see what we've got here. Oh yeah. Hey, wow. You know what? I just love it when things actually work as advertised. Now I can go to work with faith and confidence, rip out the old, install the new, tidy all this up, and I know that all the component pieces are working. Way to go, Norwood. And uh, I haven't tried the wireless yet. We'll save that for the end. Okay, just got to show you something. So, I'd shown you this circuit board. I've got to mount this little box here uh, to this plate right here. And there's no usable holes or bolts that they provided me with that will span the three inches between coming in there and here. None of those are provided. So it's a Sunday afternoon. All of my suppliers are shut down. I've got to get this thing mounted. In fact, as I look at it, no, these uh, bolts, uh, sorry, these uh, uh, bolt receptors are built for the cover plate, not for anything coming through the back. So to come through the back, you'll see some spots down there and they're not drilled at all from the back side, but it means that the entire box is going to be mounted between the top hole right there and the bottom hole there. So in fact, the top of the box has literally no support as I mount it to this plate. Not the end of the world, but not ideal. There's a couple of holes right up there in the circuit board uh, that are indented and suggest that one could put a bolt and a nut through there. I'm not bolting anything to a circuit board. So I'm going to be stuck with these holes down here. You'll see some bolt receptors. If you look closely right there, uh, but they're not drilled from the backside whatsoever. Well, here we go. So much for well thought out engineering. Hang in here. Okay, so here we go. Punched uh, four holes. One there, one there, one there, one there. Guided by those inserts in there and then punch another two right at the top of the box at my peril. I'm not going to be able to uh, put a bolt in there without removing the circuit board, board, which I'm loath to do, but I punched a couple more holes in there, and what I've got is uh, some zap straps here and they will actually fit through there. There goes the waterproof element of this box, but I will caulk it and silicon seal it to restore that and show you the final product. Hang in. Well, I'm back. And what do we got going on here? What's with all the tools? Well, I'm ready to put them all away. Come along with me. We've got everything mounted. The new uh, circuit control panel is right there. My new wireless controller is there. Hey, we've got power coming in through here. And then this controls the carriage back and forth. Contained it all through some split loom. I bought a whole array of split loom to kind of help uh, uh, guide things where they're supposed to be going and uh, keep them out of where they're not supposed to be. So the... Uh, 
uh, carriage uh, uh, mechanism is powered through this conduit ran the wiring through there contained it down the inside here never did like how having it over on this other side uh, just should something come back at me it just seems that this is a little more secure and tighten this up down here here's hoping yeah the most of the bird's nest is gone man that was a mess but i think everything's flying in formation and about as neat and tidy as i intend on making it right there for the lights and for the uh speed controls so the motor speed actuator is down here the controls are here uh for the throttle and so and also for the uh water on off mechanism which is housed up in this little box so it's going up through this array of split loom and uh, we got the lights going over the top in a conduit that's going to keep them away from the exhaust pipe as my saw head raises and lowers and wow cleaned up anything back in there i just always thought it was bizarre that there was wiring running back in that channel when we have uh, the cabling moving that close to it hey that's just me but it gets better um, this much maligned and somewhat abused set of saw covers and guards is going to be replaced the uh, new components are going to be here in three days and i'm still going to put the metal on the outside that has not yet been resolved by norwood i'm just not a fan of plastic uh, a one eighth inch piece of plastic standing between me and a saw blade that can come right out here a full uh, two or three feet as it blows apart at the weld uh, which it does should not be a big job a couple of hours on sunday if all goes well there's uh, one bolt i have to loosen in here and this hub is split and it should pull right off pop the clutch off take the idler off do the same with that uh, wheel over there he says hopefully and uh, that'll be the subject of another video particularly if i run into some snags hey thanks for being along for the journey it's always fabulous to have you subscribe uh, that keeps you in tune with what's coming and uh, what that also does is it lets you know what i'm up to so that you can comment and tell me what you would do more better different and that's the best part about this channel all the amazing advice and perspectives that i get from uh, uh, uh the viewers and uh, hang in there with me more fun to come